Hi, how's everybody doing today? I'm your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, the CEO of Murchison Minerals, JC Potvin. How are you doing today, JC? Hi, Rich. Uh, doing very well. Very good. Uh, happy, happy to be here. So. Yes, and I'm very excited to have you on the show. Please, JC, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with Murchison Minerals? Uh, sure, that's a good question. I you know, I started picking rocks when I was, uh, you know, tiny little kid. Uh, ultimately, became a geologist. Uh, worked in mineral exploration. Uh, did an MBA. Uh, I worked in the ferro alloy business, making metal. You know, by melting rocks. Uh, migrated to uh, the investment uh, uh, community. I became a top-ranked gold analyst, uh, and. Uh, Got to visit uh, most of the gold mining areas around the world. Uh, uh, did very well. Then in um, 1994, which is a long time ago, uh, basically started Pangaea Goldfields, took it public. Uh, we did some exploration and, and made discoveries in, in Peru, uh, Mali, Tanzania, uh, Kenya, uh, worked in South Africa, even worked in, you know, in, uh, in, in China. Um, the company was uh, ultimately acquired by Barrick uh, in uh, 2000 for uh, $204 million, which was at wow. the time was uh, a lot of money. <laughs> it yeah, still it's is. Still it's, still, it's, it's still a lot of money. Um, and uh, uh, meanwhile, I was uh, also running another company called uh, uh, TMN Resources. And we, we were basically in the titanium uh, mineral sands business. So we're looking for zircon and, uh, and titanium, and most of which goes into the manufacturing of, uh, of paint, you know, pigments. Um, so that, that work was uh, mostly in Kenya. We, we made some significant uh, discoveries. Um, uh, and while that was going on, I brought in some, some serious, uh, sorry, senior uh, managers to, to, to run the operation. Uh, and then I got attracted because of my gold background. Uh, I, I got a, attracted to the potential uh, for gold in Central Africa. So we started a, a, a private company uh, looking for, for gold in South Sudan, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, and so on. Um, identified uh, uh, you know, the, the geology was very, very interesting. Um, but, uh, you know, I wanted to come back to... Uh, to Canada. Uh, so I, I, uh, I took the company and uh, basically merged it with Manicuaga Minerals in uh, about uh, six, seven years ago in 2014. Um, so we, we kept the name Murchison uh, from the private company uh, and, uh, and brought our team and so on and uh, took over management of Manicuaga Minerals. And, and Manicuaga Minerals had basically two assets, which we still have, uh, one being the Brabant McKenzie uh, VMS deposit uh, in Saskatchewan, and uh, the other one being the HPM uh, project in Quebec, which is basically nickel, copper, cobalt focused. Fantastic. So the VMS type Brabant McKenzie deposit, which you touched on, hosts 10 metric ton resources of high grade zinc in both inferred and indicated category. If you were to convert it to gold, which is a more familiar commodity for investors, how much would it be? And please note that for the viewers that other mining companies who have the same or lower deposits are currently trading at a market cap of 60 to $100 million. Uh, that's a good question, uh, Rich. Uh, the uh, Rabbit McKenzie deposit, it's a VMS uh, deposit that's originally, you know, uh, came into being uh, through volcanic activity a, a long time ago. And, uh, and it's, it's extremely well located. It's, it's, uh, it contains uh, zinc. Uh, mostly zinc, uh, copper, uh, silver, uh, a little bit of lead, a little bit of gold, um, and uh, it's really, really well located. Okay, so uh, very good infrastructure, basically northern Saskatchewan, right next to the road, right next to power lines, and uh, so if it's now uh, technically we should not add uh, inferred uh, resources with with uh, you know indicated and, and measured. Um, however. Anybody can do the math, and you know, it's just the inferred is a seven point, you know, uh, two or three million tons of uh, inferred resources, and the indicated is about uh, you know the difference of, uh, over two million. Um, so we just need to do some infill drilling to be able to upgrade the inferred uh, into the measured and indicated uh, category. So that's that's uh, that that will happen. Um, 
But if you if you just take the metal that's contained in these two categories, um, you know, uh, if, if you're interested, you add them up, um, and uh, you you can apply the the current commodity prices of you know a price of zinc, price of copper, price of you know gold to the individual um, mineral percentage times the tons. Um, you end up with uh, on a combined basis uh, at using today's like this afternoon's uh, commodity prices. Uh, you know the, the the total is about two point nine billion dollars of metal, assuming one hundred percent recovery, which is obviously not going to happen. But uh, well, it, it should be uh, quite reasonable. So if you take two point nine billion dollars Canadian dollars, divide by the current you know the, the current uh, gold price of eighteen hundred dollars. Uh, or so uh, converted to Canadian dollars, and you know, it works out to be one and a quarter or so million ounces equivalent. Uh, you know, so I mean, it, it's 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 just to for illustrative uh, purposes. But it, it, you know, it's a significant uh, resource, and it's still open um, for for additional tons, um, and uh, even improving on on, on the grade. So it, it's it's a real big asset, and when you put that in the context of our current. You know, market capitalization of eight million dollars. Um, you know, it's it's it's. It, you can see that there's a, you know, the the, the company is uh, very very undervalued. Um, you know, in in the industry, and and that's just one asset. Uh, the other one being the HPM project in Quebec, which is uh, has huge potential. Um, and we'll, I guess we'll talk more about HPM in, in a few minutes. Fantastic. We love to identify undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed opportunities based on your experience and the fact that you've already done this before leads me to believe that you can do it again. So in your corporate materials, you mentioned that your HPM project has great resemblance to the Voise Bay project, which we know very well. We've talked about this project before. Everyone knows the Voise Bay nickel mine in Newfoundland. It is one of the substantial mineral discoveries in Canada. Can you elaborate on the similarity of the two projects and what makes you think the HPM will become the next Boise Bay? Uh, it might be a little bit presumptuous <laughs> that we'll, we'll yes. find something just as big as uh, Boise's Bay. But, uh, you know, when the uh, first exploration took place on Boise's Bay by a government geologist, uh, he, he went around, he saw this big Gossen area, which is basically a big rusty rock. And... Uh, it says if you have rust, that means you had some iron, and if you have some iron, maybe you have some metals, and and so on, and that that's how Voices Bay was was first mapped. Um, that geologist took a whole bunch of samples and basically sent them to the lab, and they all came back negative. Like there was nothing in these samples, which was yeah a little bit surprising, but you know that's that's what it was. So so Voices Bay basically just stayed there uh, undiscovered, uh, even though everybody knew that was this big Gossen. Um, so Diamond Fields uh, geologists essentially were flying by in their helicopter and they said, oh, look at this Gossen. Let, let's stop here for lunch. And, uh, you know, they dropped down and, and uh, we're eating their sandwiches and uh, banging on a few rocks. And lo and behold, you know, there's calcopyrite all over the place, which is copper. Um, so that's, that's how it was found. So, you know, and, and the other point I'd like to make is that Nickel deposits, uh, basically, they're all unique. Uh, they're, they're all, so to say that we're, we're going to be right, we have something that's identical to Voices Bay is, is again, very presumptuous uh, because no two deposits are the same and exactly, and it's particularly in, in the nickel business. So, but why are we so interested in, in, in HPM? Uh, it, well, we have a dozen Gossen areas uh, to, oh. to sample and some of which have never been sampled because just because they're a little bit difficult to access uh we, we have some uh, fairly steep hills uh and the other really really intriguing point is that uh although there was a, a lot of exploration you know from um around the 2000 2001 and 2008 or so uh it's, it's basically the only expression that's that's occurred the serious expression that's occurred in in that area um and which is in fact uh, located about 60 kilometers to the east of a big meteor impact uh called Man the Manicouagan uh, crater uh that happened about 2000 sorry uh, 215 million years ago but the 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 uh the really interesting point that 
uh, I have to highlight is that of all the samples that we've collected last year and this year on the property, uh, there was not a there was, there was not a single sample that had no nickel, no copper, and no cobalt. Every single wow. sample had some values. Now, not necessarily commercial values, but there is each each sample had some trace of nickel, copper, cobalt, and some of them were at a pretty decent uh, grades. So that's that bodes well for exploration. Now, uh, g given those uh, very encouraging results, we we did a, an airborne survey uh, for the magnetic signature of the area uh, back last fall, about a year ago, and then we followed that up with a what we call a VTEM survey, which is a, another uh, sorry uh, no, another technique of um, of uh, exploration and uh, identified. Uh, close to pretty close to 50 different EM conductors on, on, on the package, on the, on the land holdings. Um, and wow. by, by looking at the signature, uh, you know, the relative strength of these um, anomalies, uh, which in fact are, are shown on the corporate presentation, but uh, we, we have posted on our website, uh, which is basically uh, slide number 15. Um, it, it shows all the various conductors that need to be followed up. Um, you know, historically, there's only uh, basically three of these 50 targets that have been seen any drilling whatsoever in the, in the past. Um, and the bulk of the historical drilling has been on the Iron Bar prospect, um, which confirmed utilization down to about 280 meters. Uh, but that survey, that VTEM survey, uh, showed uh, quite a few really, really strong, uh, powerful electromagnetic conductors. And those are shown, in fact, on slide number 14 in the same presentation. Um, and you know, when, when you see the, the, the red bullseyes that, uh, on, on that map, um, each one, uh, you know, if you, see, if you see a signature called channel 45, which is the strongest uh, relative strength of the anomaly, uh, it basically, it tells you that there's metal there. Now, what, what's the metal content or form, or is it iron or pure iron, or is it uh, you know, nickel or copper or, or, or a mixture? Um, of course, you have to go and sample it and drill it and, and, and so on. But the fact that we have so many uh, really, really strong, you know, met likely metallic uh, type deposits uh, bodes really well for exploration. Uh, so that's so that's very exciting. So right now, uh, we did we did some exploration in um, uh, field exploration in uh, early June, uh, focused on what we call the PYC target, the pick, uh, and and we established that the conductor extends for at least 1.7 kilometers, uh, and it's up to 59 meters wide. Um, and the this geophysics that we did. Uh, back in April, uh, when you do the modeling, it shows that the the the, the signal uh, goes down to at least 300 meters, which is uh, you know a, a good start, and that's that's probably the limit of the uh, technology and so far. So so the 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 uh, interesting mineralization probably extends uh, a lot deeper, uh, but we we have to drill it to, to find it to you know to to prove it. Uh, but when when you do the the math. Um, you take the strike length, you take the width, uh, which obviously is going to vary. Um, as I said, we, we've managed to establish up to 59 meters. That's not to say it's all 59 meters, but uh, it, it's quite significant. Um, and the very high de specific density of these rocks, when, when you have metal, you know, they're quite heavy, so it doesn't take much of a volume of rock to make a ton. Um, so we, we were confident that by doing some drilling, uh, and we're planning to drill uh, PYC this uh, shortly, like in the next uh, few months, uh, we, we certainly hope to identify a significant tonnage of uh, what we call inferred um, realization uh, that uh, contains uh, uh, nickel, copper, and cobalt uh, of uh, interesting values. Like we, we, we have sampled these, uh, this, this body uh, systematically on surface. Uh, there's no reason to say that it won't continue at depth. Uh, so we're really excited, you know, excited about that. And 
uh, and the sampling of some of these uh, other targets that we have identified uh, <clears throat> proves that there's nickel, copper, cobalt everywhere, <laughs> pretty well. Um, so it's, it's really, really exciting. Um, so we're, we're, we're quite anxious to, to get this drilling uh, going. So Yeah, absolutely. And we love here at Rich TV Live to find these exciting opportunities before everyone else. That's really what we do best. Now, what should we expect from Murchison in terms of news flow within the next six months? And what are the short-term and long-term milestones that you are expecting to achieve? That's a good question, uh, Rich. Uh, we are planning to do this uh, 3,500 meter drilling program uh, on, you know, on the HPM project, particularly on the PIC. Uh, we hope to drill a couple of holes in some of these uh, other targets at the same time, time permitting and, and weather and so on. Um, and and, and the, the, uh, the idea is to, to confirm that we have a large body uh, that's mineralized at that PIC. And we know that the iron bar uh, prospect, which has, was drilled with uh, about 30 holes. So it's, it's, it lies only about uh, one and a half kilometers away. Uh, that's been drilled for 300 meters by, as I said, uh, 280 meters of depth. And, and with some very, high, very, very nice uh, nickel values up to 1.74% uh, nickel uh, over 47 uh, meters um, with a good uh, copper and, 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 uh, and cobalt. So we, we, Basically, plan to uh, find one, at least one, if not, you know, more deposits, and you know, so that will go into the news flow. We have to drill it, so we we are working hard right now at uh, lining up a drilling company, which is uh, we're in the process of signing a contract. We've lined up a helicopter, uh, a base of operation uh, for the team, and um, we've we've also started to do some metallurgical work on uh, how to recover the sun, nickel, and copper and cobalt uh, out of the material that we collected back in June. Uh, so they'll be uh, part of a news flow. Uh, you know, the, the drilling results, the metallurgy of the, the rocks that we find in this area. Um, and uh, uh, and uh, so that, that will probably take, uh, you know, uh, uh, all of our efforts and, you know, and concentration over the next six months to do that. That's not to say that we're forgetting about the Brabant McKenzie deposit. Um, and the best time to, to drill the Brabant McKenzie deposit, in fact, is in winter. So we hope to be able to do to the, you know, some of this infill drilling uh, to expand the resource and also in, increase the grade at Brabant McKenzie uh, this uh, coming of February, March, uh, you know, uh, six months from now. Fantastic. Now here at Rich TV Live, we love to understand the fundamentals of the company. We love to interview the CEOs. We love to really understand the share structure. Can you speak a little bit on the share structure and how the company plans to attract more institutional as well as retail investors? Yes. Uh, so we have 109 million shares outstanding. Uh, about 30% of the shares are held by uh, one of our directors, uh, Don Johnson. He's, a, he's been a great supporter. Um, and uh, continues to be a great supporter. Uh, so, of the, I'd say uh, another 10, 12 percent is held by a couple of institutions, um, and and the rest is essentially retail. Uh, so, so I'd say maybe 45 percent is in a few hands, and the rest is retail. Um, we we uh, we are. Um, trying to tell our story uh, on multiple platforms. Um, and as a former analyst, I have some ideas on how to do that, but uh, it's a very competitive world out there. It's a different, you know, we, we have, the industry is, is filled with, uh, you know, literally 3,000 or so exploration companies. So it's hard to get the attention. Um, but Absolutely. if you have a good project, I mean, you, you, you will acquire, uh, you'll get that attention eventually. Uh, but uh, for instance, uh, later this week, I am giving a, a presentation to one of the uh, recognized um, uh, brokerage houses in, in, in Toronto. Um, and I gave, a, gave them a presentation just last week and uh, their analyst uh, certainly liked the story and uh, he wants some of his team members to um, to hear it. Uh, so we'll be doing that again, but that's, that's a process. It's an ongoing process. You, you know, you go to give presentations, uh, 
regularly. Uh, you know, there's a PDAC conference in you know next March. Uh, there's other um, conferences that uh, we attend, um, and uh, you know, uh, publications and so on. So it's a you know it's it's a, it's a work in progress. So so. Fantastic. And hopefully we can help you gain more exposure with retail investors here at Rich TV Live as well. If there was one thing you would want shareholders to know about Murchison Minerals today, what would that be? Well, um, most CEOs will tell you that their company is, uh, is cheap. <laughs> but in our case, um, you know, I, could, I can prove it. Uh, we, we have a substantial resource in Saskatchewan at the Rabbit McKenzie deposit. Uh, so this is not just you know, wishful thinking. We're looking for to find something. We have found something um, on the HPM project. There was some drilling on the uh, iron bar, uh, to basically deposit. Uh, it's uh, it needs more drilling. But what we have identified here is the the PYC target, which is just nearby. Uh, it it appears to be about five times the size. Um, so that's that's really really exciting, uh, and I believe that we can ex you know. Uh, uh, develop some uh, identify a block off some substantial resource and, and 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 we should not forget that the pyc target is located strategically uh, within eight kilometers of an active uh, railroad it's uh, about 30 kilometers from a 35 megawatt hydro dam that has no customers the uh, the iron mines uh, in the area that were depleted um, and you know, everything is gone. So we, there's this hydro plant that's just sitting there <laughs> uh, owned by Quebec Hydro. Uh, it, that would be a fantastic source of power for uh, future uh, operations at, at HPM. Great. And also this railroad goes to, uh, to Cartier, uh, Quebec Cartier. It is basically on the Gulf of St. Lawrence. It's only 225 kilometers by rail. So fantastic infrastructure, you know, hydropower, you're in Quebec, uh, which is uh, you're very Quebec, um, uh, sorry, very mining uh, oriented uh, province, uh, very supportive and um, excellent logistics. And then so far as transport is, is concerned. And uh, so it's, it, and we're dealing with metals that are in the limelight today, you know, nickel, copper, cobalt, you need these metals for, to make all these electrical cars and these batteries and so on for uh, this, this new economy that we're entering into. So it's, it's a fantastic mix uh, of assets. Fantastic. We're going to have investors that are going to see this interview from literally a hundred countries that are watching Rich TV Live. And what is the best way for those investors to get in touch with the company if they have any questions about Murchison Minerals? Well, the Easiest is uh, to look up our uh, contact information on our uh, website, <clears throat> and and basically the uh, email address is info at murchisonminerals.com, uh, or you can contact me directly. It's uh, JC Potvin at murchisonminerals.com. Fantastic. Well, first and foremost, I want to thank you for joining us today, JC Potvin, the CEO of Murchison Minerals. And before I say goodbye, I must remind you guys that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about or discuss here in Rich TV Live. In saying that, I've already taken a look at the stock. I've looked at your market cap. I've looked at your background. And I believe this is extremely, at eight cents, undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed opportunity. If you like these videos, please smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere, and subscribe. And if you're not winning, you're not watching, we're bringing the winners, and we're bringing them for, to you first. Thank you for joining us today, JC. Love to have you back on the show again soon. It's a pleasure to, to be able to participate. Thanks, Rich. Keep up the great work. We'll be following your story very closely. Once again, the CEO of Murchison Minerals, JC Potvin. This is Rich from Rich to Be Live, saying have a nice day, everybody. We'll talk to you soon.